live from the KATC TV3 studios, this is Friday Night Football. And a very good evening. Welcome inside the KATC studio for Friday Night Football. It's October 6th, and it's also week 6 of high school football here in Acadia. And I'm Andrew Clay. And I'm Seth Lewis. A half dozen area teams entering this week still unbeaten and trying to stay that way tonight. Yeah, all wide district play is heating up, and that's where we start our night with our game of the week. Since its opening day loss, Opelousas Catholic has won four straight, holding each opponent to exactly six points. But Sacred Heartville Platte brings its own fire. Outside of a blemish last week at Catholic of Point Capi, the Trojans have been near perfect. It's a battle of four and one teams. When we pick up action in the third quarter, Zach Mangarelli connects with Devin Thierry, who makes a man miss and is off to the races. Vikings taking a 14-7 lead. Sacred Heart looking to come back now. Wesley Looney, he's going to roll back to his right. Fires downfield. Never a good idea. It's intercepted by the defender, Kane Armand. Remember that name. The Vikings are feeling it. Next drive, Mangarelli at the quarterback keeper. He'll bob and weave his way down the field. Head fakes all for the big gain. And that would set up. Ooh, he's got the moves. Yeah, he does. That will set up. More Mangarelli going to throw it down the field. Connects with him. Finish. Oh, he's going to finish it off himself here. Vikings taking a 20 to 7 lead and it's getting late folks to the fourth. Sacred Heart running out of time, needing some magic. Would they find it? Well, Wesley Looney is picked off by that guy I told you to remember before. Kane Armand, his second INT of the game and that's the nail in the coffin for the Trojans tonight. Opelousas Catholic win 35 to 7. Catholic moving to 5 and 1 on the season. And they'll play city rival Westminster Academy coming up next week. Well, Church Point visiting Northwest. This one would tighten up late, but not early as Gavin Richard breaks through the crowd for the score, putting Church Point on the board first. Next drive, it's Breland Belliard who's able to get to the outside and turn the corner for the score to put the Bears up 14 to nothing. Raiders. Looking to get off back on the board. Montez Sam rolls to his right. Sac scared. Uh, Sacred Heart says all over it. I think it's Northwest. The church point all over that one. Tosses the body to the left side of the field. Picks up Trevion Wheeler. That would lead to Gavin Richard. Chewing up yards for the Bears as he breaks off this 50-yard gain to end the first quarter. And it would set up a pass from Breland Jones who connects with Trey Babineau in the end zone. Right there, oh, great catch. Awesome catch. Church point yes, up 20 indeed. to nothing. It would make a late charge, but wouldn't be enough. Church point 34, Northwest 32. Kadian is one of those six unbeaten teams. The Wrecking Rams have walked all over its opponents, winning by an average of 25 points each week. Tonight, Acadiana hosted Como, or uh, actually Como hosted Acadiana, an upset-minded Spartans team looking to send a message to all of Class 5A. Como honoring Corporal Michael Middlebrook before the game, including a decal on the field. Now, early on in the action for this one, the Wrecking Rams breaking out the tricks. Double reverse to Jalen James. He's cutting for a 30-yard gain down the field, but the Spartans say silly rabbits. Tricks are for kids and turn the <laughs> lights out. I love okay. tricks. It wasn't on purpose. They didn't turn the lights out on purpose, but it did cause a 20 minute delay. Once the lights were back on, Acadiana lit up the scoreboard. Up 14 nothing in the second. Dylan Monette with the touchdown, but Como trying to cut the lead before half. First, Trey Harris connects with Andrew Simon for the big gain downfield, and that leads to Tyler Lewis connecting with Raekwon Elair for the score. Como trails 21 7. But they left too much time on the board for Acadiana and quarterback Jalen Burrell. He finds Hunter Tab, who shakes off one defender, then rumbles inside of the five. The duo would connect on a touchdown minutes later, and Acadiana rolls in this one 49 to 13. Now it was homecoming over at Lafayette High as they hosted New Iberia. And of course, congrats to Dela Galmore who won homecoming queen. Now third quarter, the Yellow Jackets are already up 28 to six when Eddie McZeal speeds down the field. You can't really top that. You can't top the queen. He's caught inside the 10. A couple plays later, it's McZeal finishing the deal. Here he is at the goal line. He may be small, but he packs a big punch. 35 cool. to six, the Yellow Jackets lead. Now still in the third quarter, Lions trying to get anything working. Fourth down, Brennan Broussard to Coy Thomas. He's gonna make the tough grab nice over a catch. defender. 
for the first down. Absolutely. Definitely still giving great effort. They wouldn't score on that drive, but later in the fourth, it's Corin Norman who punches his way in. But it would be New Iberia that would win this one, 35 to 19. Now, the student section always lit at St. Thomas Moore as they hosted Westgate. But Westgate up 7 yeah. nothing in the first yeah, quarter. Yeah, upset mine at Westgate. Yeah, the Tigers quarterback, though, Darian Charles, intercepted by Ben Thibodeau. He's going to rumble down the sideline for a good position for the Cougars. But only a couple plays later, quarterback Peyton Land Landry is going to uh, throw an interception to William Cryer. Well, actually, that interception um, right there to Westgate. But then Peyton Landry screens to William Cryer right here, and he's going to come into your TV screen in three, two, one. Careful, Seth. Knocked right out of bounds. Yeah, yeah you, you, you got to keep your head on the swivel on the sideline. I Second can't, quarter. You can't get hurt. Same drive and fourth and goal. The double reverse pass by Mason Passon, defended well by DeAndre Spencer and his turnovers on downs. But the next play, Charles, the quarterback, isn't able to handle a bad wow. snap. Elliot Roundtree falls on it fast to tie things up at 7-7. And St. Thomas Moore eventually cruises in this one, 42 to 20. Took a long time to get on the board, but they yes, came indeed. roaring back. Stay in Lafayette, Paris, Northside. Trying to snap a two game losing streak face in Karen Crow. Vikings reaching deep in the playbook. It's the receiver option pass. Jacory Benoit open midfield. First down, Vikings, but the drive would stall. First play, the second possession. The option here is fumbled. Neither team can get on top of it. Jalen Angeli scoops it. He's going to score. Karen Crow taking a 7 0 lead. The team's put the ball on the turf five times in the first eight minutes. Later in the first, check out this play. Austin Bro spins out of the play, throws a dime to the end zone, but the diving catch is ruled incomplete, out of bounds. I still had to show it to you. Well, Bro says, hey, I got this. No touchdown first. I'm going to dive into the end zone for the touchdown. Bro gets the score as Karen Crow looking to pick up the win tonight, 49-6. to well, as always, if you missed any scores, they are conveniently located at the bottom of your screen, brought to you each and every week by Popeyes. Coming up, we'll check in with Rain, who sought its fifth straight win to open the year tonight. But first, let's meet our top squad, brought to you every week by Cox.